Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our Double Shot interviews and I'm joined by Shane Elliott who is the ANZ Banking Group CEO. Um, hi Shane and, hi. and thanks for making some time for us. Um, now you've been CEO at ANZ Group now mm. for well, over a year yes. um, and you've instigated quite a bit of change. Now one of the um, strategic priorities you outlined was making uh, or building a simpler, better capitalised and more balanced bank. Um, which is, is quite an interesting one. One thing that I guess looking at it from a New Zealand perspective is as you're doing that as the group CEO, to what extent do you look at it from an ANZ New Zealand standalone position? Well, one of our primary responsibilities um, at our board level and as chief executive is really um, balancing this portfolio, this capital that we have. We have $55 billion of our shareholders' capital. And you know we have to deploy that capital in a responsible way where we have strategic long-term advantage, but also that generates a, a decent return. And um, some of that capital sits here in New Zealand, and we've got to make sure that we get the balance right. And so um, the whole point about creating a simpler, better bank was, you know, quite. A, I think it sounds very simple, but a decision made at the board that essentially was, would we rather be a smaller but better bank in terms of our capital or do we want to persist in, and, and with size? And we said, look, let's be a little bit smaller but better. And that's why you've seen us actually disposing of some non-core or non-strategic assets to just kind of simplify what we do and focus our both our intellectual capital but also our financial capital on a few things that we can do extraordinarily well. So one of the, the, the asset sales mm. that you've announced obviously is UDC in New Zealand, yes. which, which has been performing very well. Yes. Um, was it a hard decision to decide to sell that business? It's always a hard decision to sell a business because these are businesses that we know and love. You know, these have been partly, and UDC's been part of the group for a long time. But you know, and I think it's an important the point that you make that it's a good business. So in many ways it's easy to sell underperforming businesses. It's hard to sell good ones. And the reason that we sell a business like that, and we've made some other decisions in Australia, is really about are these businesses on strategy? Are we the best owner for these businesses? And when we and, and we've got to make sure that our capital and our resources are really being allocated where we can do extraordinarily well. And and we decided that that's not an area. A finance company in New Zealand, good business, decent returns, customer you know provides a service to the community. Um, we're not the best owner for that. And we would rather put our financial and and our intellectual capital into our core businesses around being the best bank for people who want to, buy, want to buy and own a home or people who want to start and run a small business. Now you're also reviewing um, your Australian wealth business mm. um, and you've, look, you've, you've talked about once you've completed that you'll look at the New Zealand wealth business too. Can you tell us a little bit about what's driving the review of your wealth operations I guess on both sides of the Tasman and what you might look to do with the New Zealand wealth sure. unit? So there's a couple of things driving that review. One is really just a very kind of cold, you know, financial analysis that's when we look at our wealth business, and our wealth business is very different to some of our, our peers. Our wealth business is re fundamentally, particularly in Australia, a life insurance business as opposed to a superannuation uh, business. One of the challenges in life insurance is that it's very capital intensive, and so the returns are quite difficult to generate. So that's one. So we basically said again, gee, when we're looking at our capital allocation, we don't want to have, we've got a lot of capital tied up in this business. Is it not going to generate the right sort of returns? Is this really the best model? Is there a better way? And we've decided there is, and there's a model of essentially partnering with somebody else. So we want to be in the business of providing wealth solutions, but we don't necessarily want to be the manufacturer of those solutions. So that was the first point. The second reason for doing it was also the regulatory environment. You know, it's getting, there's a lot happening in that industry for good reason. So we, we support the regulatory change that just sort of raises the cost of operating in the business. And again, we can only do so many things. Uh, we only have so much financial and intellectual bandwidth. And we said, look, this is not an area that we can provide the most value. So we said, we'll have a look. And so what we decided is we, and as we speak, we're sending out an information memorandum to the marketplace around our Australian wealth business. And it's really to seek a strategic partnership. We're not just putting a big for sale sign on this and saying who's got the highest bid. Uh, we're, as I said, we're going to be in the business. Uh, you're going to be able to walk into an ANZ or talk to an advisor about life insurance and, and superannuation, but we may not necessarily manufacture it, so we need to partner with somebody. New Zealand fits into that. New Zealand is actually in many ways a better balanced business. Our business here isn't predominantly life insurance. We've got this fabulous KiwiSaver business, um, which we are a market leader. We like that business very much. And so we have a slightly different approach here. We said we're going we're gonna to keep the KiwiSaver. It's core to what we do. We do it well. Um, the life insurance business, we don't know. 
we'll, we'll have a look at that after we've concluded uh, Australia. And if we find a really good model of partnership, perhaps we'll extend that into the life insurance business here in New Zealand. But KiwiSaver business, you're not looking to partner with anyone. That no. will just remain ANZ. Yeah, that's our, that's our intention now. Absolutely, yes. It's a good, as I said, it's a good business, slightly different, low capital. We haven't been very good at it. And so I think that's, you know, that's what we've decided to do. So in terms of the New Zealand wealth review, that will solely be life insurance? Yes. I mean, there might be, there are other little tiny bits and pieces in that business, but primarily if and when we get to that point, it, we, we'll look at the life insurance business and make a decision then. In terms of these particular parts of the, the business that you're, you're looking to partner with or, or mm. in terms of UDC sell, to what extent is concerns about disruption and maybe reputational risk, especially on the wealth side, to what extent are they playing a part? So that's a good question. I mean, I think that dis- we'll deal with the, the two pieces. So disruption, absolutely. And when I talk about having you know, our intellectual capital uh, focused on a few of things. Partly it's to say, look, we, we are going to be disrupted. Technology, new entrants, regulatory change is having a massive impact on all parts of our business. And um, it seems to me and my team that better that we just focus on a few things and do them really well uh, so that we can deal with that disruption. If we're trying to handle disruption on all sorts of fronts and all sorts of markets, it's more likely we'll fail. So that's exa- you know, so yes, that's a very important part about creating a simpler, more focused um, more focused bank. Reputational risk is an interesting one. Actually, as I said, we and most of that ten, has typically focused around the wealth business at the moment, not, not exclusively, but mostly. As I said, we're still going to be in that business. Uh, the reputational issues in that business are really to do with the way the product is sold. Well, we're still going to be doing that. You know? So we, those, those risks and being really well managed and being really thoughtful about how we engage with customers is still going to be very much part of ANZ. So no, the the partnership model we enter into is not going to make those issues go away. Now you've you've talked about um, how you know building a smaller, uh, better bank that uses the capital you have from your mm. shareholders better. And one of the things you've said is that complete ownership of the value chain is not the way forward. It's going to be about partnerships. It's quite a sea change from from what a bank like ANZ does now, isn't it? Yes, it is, and it's a different model. And um, you know the model over the last you know, 30 years or more, I guess, in, in banking has been this universal banking model where we own and operate all parts of the value chain. So whether it's, you know, life insurance or funds management, private banking, online broking, all of these things uh, we do. I think the way going forward, and again, partly to your question about disruption, says the only way to win is to be really excellent at these things. It's very hard to be excellent at all of those. So we've taken a view, and not all of our peers agree with us, by the way, but we've taken a view that we're going to be more open, more of an open platform, that our strength is really uh, the way we service customers, and we can partner with people who are in the manufacturing. So for example, what have we done in Australia recently? We just signed a deal where we essentially have partnered with an online broking provider who will run the nuts and bolts of our um, share broking operation. It'll still be have an ANZ brand on it. We're st- still, our customers will still have access to it. But it's going to be in partnership with somebody who's really terrific at and knowing how to run that really, really well, who will be better placed to handle disruption and new entrants than we are. And so I think that is the way forward. I don't know where that'll stop. Uh, we're talking about it in the wealth business. I've said we've done it in online broking. Um, we just are much more, I think, more open-minded to partnering. I think that is the way forward. So I guess in terms of this strategy, um, what are the core areas that you wouldn't consider selling or you wouldn't look for partners in? I mean, are there sort of four or five key? So our business, we're a bank. And so our our kind of um, crown jewels, if you will, the things that we have to be excellent at that are core to us is, first of all, is customer service. You know, we have to to own that customer relationship, nurture that relationship and be very good at that. Um, Therefore, the way we go to market, the channels, uh, the mobile banking, the online, all of those sorts of things, we have to, we have to um, own those. They're very, very important because that's how we control and compete on terms of customer service. And then the second part is just core banking. What do we do for people? We move money around for people. We, you know, we change the timing of people's consumption. You want to buy a house today and you can't afford it or you want to go on a holiday and you can't, you, you borrow money or you want to save and defer consumption until you retire. So that maturity transformation. So those sorts of businesses, banking, you know, savings, borrowing, moving money around, foreign exchange, those are core to what we do. So no, I don't, they, they will never move away from ANZ, but all the ancillary services that go with that are where we would look to partner. 
And in, in terms of this vertical integration model that you talk about, I mean, do you actually think that model is broken? I think it has risks. I don't think it's broken. I mean, there are clearly some people, uh, maybe they're better at operating it uh, than others, or they have slightly different um, core capabilities as organisations. It's much more difficult today. I mean, I've been in the industry for 30 years. It, uh, with, with all the regulation that's happening in the world, different community expectations, it's become more difficult to manage. doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's far more difficult than it ever has been. And so companies have to make a choice. And I'm sure that some will continue with the vertically integrated model and probably do quite well out of it. You know, that's not the model that we will be pursuing. Now, I'm um, just focusing specifically more on, on New Zealand. Um, middle of last year, um, David Hisco came out very publicly and talked about um, concerns around the Auckland property yes. market being being overheated and, and ANZ tightened up some of its lending criteria around that time as well. Whenever, um, and, and other banks have, have followed, whenever that happens, um, I guess there's always a perception in New Zealand, oh, this must be driven out of headquarters in Melbourne or Sydney, they're, they're worried, the Aussies are worried about right. something that you know, they need more capital or they want a bigger dividend from New Zealand or something. Just curious, I mean, to what extent are the decisions made um, at ANZ New Zealand influenced from Melbourne? So in that particular case, that was completely a New Zealand decision. Um, I, you know, David um, didn't ask for or seek uh, our approval for that on his views. They were the views of the New Zealand business and that's exactly as it should be. So there were, we had no involvement in that from a group um, uh, perspective. The role of the group, we are the shareholder. We have a, we have a board here uh, that is um, predominantly uh, non-executive directors, so they're independent, and they have a duty of care to, for the business uh, here. Um, I'm on that board, um, but the role of Australia is really around strategy. So we set some guide rails, if you will, or some boundaries as shareholder and say, look, in running a bank in New Zealand, we'd like you to keep within these parameters in terms of size and scale and risk appetite. Uh, but other than that, we don't really get involved in the day to day decisions. So whether the team here decides to, you know, grow or shrink a business or um, add more branches or invest in new technology, those are decisions that get made here. Um, as long as they're within those pretty broad boundaries um, and being really clear that they are on strategy of the group, the business decisions are made here. Okay. I mean, I can't remember the last time, I can't even, you know, you know, I've been on the board here since I joined ANZ, so since 2009. Um, really, the business runs almost completely independently. Um, clearly, they come to us once a year like all our business divisions, and present their strategy to the group and say, this is what we're going to do because, you know, generally um, it's about resources. You know, uh, they want more capital or more people or more technology. And, and we, we, as shareholder, have to look in and assess the merits of that investment. But it's, it's um, as I mentioned, it's very much run as an independent business here. From the ANZ Group perspective, how do you currently feel about the New Zealand housing market, especially your exposure, I guess, to Auckland? So, I mean, the, the good and bad news is, I guess, is that they're highly correlated with Australia, so it's not a foreign issue, you know. Auckland is suffering from exactly the same issues as Melbourne and Sydney. So, and some of that, uh, and what we're seeing in house prices is a response to a lot of good things. The economy's growing, lots of migration, both domestic and international, uh, et cetera. But there's clearly, there are some supply challenges. There's some infrastructure challenges. Um, on the place, but so house prices have uh, grown extraordinarily over the last um, decade, in particular. So we watch that really very, very closely. On some measures, I and mean, it's always a bit hard to compare, but on some measures, Auckland's actually even more extreme than than, than Melbourne and Sydney. So yes, it is a concern um, because you know we, when we lend money to people to buy homes, we want to make sure that they can afford that debt, that 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 it's a responsible amount for them to borrow, and that they can comfortably repay it. And obviously, with house prices growing at a much faster rate than household income, sometimes that ability to repay is getting stretched. So it's something we watch very, very closely. I think um, one of the benefits of Australia and New Zealand, and I've worked in places all around the world, is we are fortunate to have a very, very strong regulatory system. And so our regulators, uh, and the system works, and they pay very close attention. I mean, they... I mean, they may not agree with me on this. I mean, I think in many ways they also have it slightly easier because they have a smaller market to regulate you know they can literally meet with a few people and think about the whole market as opposed to say in the US where there's 7,000 banks but nonetheless the system works and the regulatory changes that have been made on both sides of the Tasman recently have actually been good things and um, 
while they may not have taken all the heat out of the market, I think they have been positive developments for everybody. Now, you obviously you grew up in Auckland. You mm. know you know the city pretty well. Yep. Um, you're well familiar with the, the housing shortage here. And the unitary plan, so obviously, is to see densification of housing, more yep. apartments, that type of thing. There's a bit of concern around funding. Um, who's going to fund all that? Um, to what extent is ANZ keen to be involved in funding and uh, in the funding to help, I guess, solve Auckland's housing? So we're problems? in the. That's a really good question. So, you know, we we are an integral part. I'm talking about ANZ, but also the banking sector. We're an integral part of the economy. When the economy does well, when Auckland does well, we do well. And so we do have a vested interest. There's a total alignment uh, in that. We're in the business and have been for almost 200 years of helping the community transition through good times and bad, you know, building new infrastructure, building new industry, moving from domestic uh, businesses to international, all of those things. So when Auckland will go through a change around the infrastructure, you know, housing, etc., we have a role to play in that. So we need our role is to make sure that it's done responsibly, with thought, it's affordable, all of that. So we'll have an opinion on all of those things. We won't always be right, but we'll have an opinion and we absolutely uh, have an interest in helping finance some of that. That's our job. And um, I guess the other big area of your, your lending exposure in New Zealand is, is the rural sector, mm. uh, especially dairy. How are you feeling about that at the moment? Well, better than we were, uh, better than we were a while ago. I think you know, you're right. I mean, if you, if you think about our portfolio, our, our, our risks in the economy, the biggest portfolio we have is housing. You know, we, we, we have a lot of mortgages on our balance sheet. And then a long way down, a lot smaller. But, you know, we, the, the other big two would be sort of commercial property and um, the rural sector. So it's something we watch extraordinarily closely. Um, and we've been, our history in ANZ in particular, particularly with our history with the rural bank that we bought in, and National Bank, is we're an integral part of the rural economy. So it's something we know pretty well, we think. It's something we pay, we've got a long-term perspective on. New Zealand has a, a competitive advantage in the sector. It's just very volatile, as we know, in terms of when we don't have, a, the industry doesn't have a lot of control or influence over, over pricing. So um, the sector today is in much better shape than it was. I remember when I uh, came back to this part of the world in 2009, uh, just after the financial crisis, um, when you looked at the farming sector in New Zealand, it's fair to say that a lot of farmers were really stretched in terms of sitting on way too much debt, weren't able to pay interest regularly, and you know it, it, it wasn't a healthy situation. Um, I think to the credit of the farming sector and a lot of you know uh, influences, and to the credit of the banks, there's been, they've, they've worked through a lot of those issues today. And farms today have got much stronger balance sheets and are sitting are much more um, able to withstand any shocks than they, they were. Still some work to do. Um, still not as good as it should be, I think, but it's a, it's a lot better than it was. Well, thanks a lot for that, Shane. That's Shane Elliott, CEO of ANZ Banking Group, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.